me I'm not dreaming this. I'm not going to send it. And here are yet another great 10 prompts you can use with ChatGPT. As always, timestamps in the description. Let's do this. I don't know about you, but I tend to understand things better when I can relate them to real world examples. Well, now we can use the AI to explain things in a way that we understand. Explain quantum physics with an analogy. Imagine you're playing a game of poker with a friend. In this game, you can't see the cards in your opponent's hand, so you don't know what cards they have, but you can make some educated guesses based on the probability of certain cards being in their hand. Quantum physics works in a similar way, where you can't directly observe the behavior of particles, but you can make some educated guesses based on probability. In poker, the outcome of the game is determined by a combination of chance and skill. In quantum physics, the behavior of particles is determined by both chance and the laws of nature. Finally, I get it. This is a really cool prompt if you want to call the email somebody for any reason, or if you want to interview them for your blog or your podcast. No need to rack your brains trying to come up with a good question to ask. Just ask the AI. Here is Dean Kuhn's About page. Give me a number of questions to ask, and paste the URL to Dean's profile. If the URL fails, just copy the text from the page, paste it onto ChatGPT, and you're good to go. What inspired you to pursue a career in writing, and when did you first realize you wanted to become a novelist? How do you approach combining different genres in your writing? You've published over 100 books and sold more than 500 million copies worldwide. How do you stay motivated and continue to produce such a high volume of work? Your website mentions that you're an advocate for animal rights and support various organizations that protect animals. Can you tell us more about your involvement in these causes? How do you decide which publisher to work with? Your website also mentions that you enjoy painting and photography in addition to writing. How do these other artistic pursuits influence your writing? Many of your books have been adapted into movies or TV shows. How involved are you in the adaptation process? What advice would you give to aspiring writers who are trying to break into the publishing industry? Your novels often deal with themes of good versus evil and the power of the human spirit. Why do you think these themes resonate with readers? How do you approach developing characters and storylines over multiple books? Perfect. Create an email to Mr. Coons asking if he would be so kind as to provide answers to those questions for a blog post to feature on my blog. Mention that I am aware his time is precious and how grateful I would be if he could share his wisdom with my readers. Add the previous questions to the email and a big thank you in advance. Dear Mr. Coons, I hope this email finds you well. My name and is... I run a blog dedicated to writing and publishing. I have been a fan of your work for many years and have always admired your ability to blend different genres in your writing. I would be honored if you could spare some time to answer a few questions for a blog post I'm putting I together. I understand that your time is precious, but I would be extremely grateful if you could share your wisdom with my readers. Here are the questions I would love to ask you. Nice. Here's one way to create your next piece of persuasive communication. Write a short email to Casey Neistat that persuades him to partner with me for a collaboration. Include three reasons why it makes sense for us to partner together. My channel is all about AI and productivity. Dear Casey Neistat, I hope this email finds you I'm well. I'm a big fan of your work and have been following your journey for years. I believe that our channels could create some amazing content together. And I wanted to reach out to you to explore a potential partnership. Here are three reasons why I think it makes sense for us to collaborate. Diverse audience. Our channels have different focuses. Collaborating could bring our audiences together. Introducing them to new content and ideas. By combining our areas of expertise, we could create content that is both entertaining and informative. Collaboration can be beneficial for both of us. I would love to discuss this opportunity further with you and explore how we can work together. That's pretty good. I'm not going to send it. Now, I like spreadsheets, but I suck at formulas. I have this calculator, so that's probably something to do with it. But now, give me the Excel formula for working out the date. That was an easy one. For you, maybe. But the sky's the limit. Now, let's say we want to launch a blog about productivity, but we're not sure what to write about. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask the AI to write an article. The first step is to identify topics we can cover. This will help us build topical authority. Let's do that. Suggest 10 semantically related topics to productivity. Time management, goal setting, work-life balance, motivation, focus and concentration, mindfulness, task prioritization, efficiency and effectiveness, procrastination, stress management. Now we have our blog categories. Let's continue. Suggest 10 articles for each topic. We just fleshed out our blog and generated 100 article ideas in less than one minute. Tell me I'm not dreaming this. Oh, let's create ourselves a publishing schedule. Using the article ideas, create a 30-day content calendar for my productivity blog. Include 20 blog posts, two from each category, as well as 20 short-form videos, four long-form videos, and two email newsletters. Now we have a structure, all our content ideas, and a plan. All we need to do now is just generate the articles. I should have kept this one to myself. Here's a powerful technique for creating great articles for a particular audience. The trick is to get the AI to mimic an influencer that leads that audience. Like this. Generate an article about waking up at 4am in terms of productivity. Include little known facts and recent breakthroughs or insights in this space, backed by science. Include references to studies. Waking up at 4am is a practice that has been adopted by many successful people, from business leaders to athletes and artists. References. Matthews, G. 
and Kelly, P. 2019, Early to Bed, Early to Rise, Evidence of the Effectiveness of the Sleep Hygiene and Sleep Education in Improving Sleep in University Students. Sleep Health, 5-2, 180-186. And here's the magic. Write it in the voice of Gary V. What's up guys, it's your boy Gary V, and today we're talking about the power of waking up at 4am. Now, I know what you're thinking, Gary, that's crazy, who would want to wake up that early? But hear me out. Here's how you add rocket fuel to an article. I'll use the article we created in the previous prompt. Suggest a list of prompts to help me improve this content. Sure, here are some prompts that could help you improve this content. Can you provide some real-life examples of successful people who wake up at 4 a.m. and how it has benefited them? Are there any potential downsides to waking up at 4 a.m. that you should address? How can someone adjust their evening routine to make waking up at 4 a.m. easier? How can someone determine if waking up at 4 a.m. is right for them and their lifestyle? Are there any specific industries or professions where waking up at 4 a.m. is particularly beneficial? Can you provide some tips for maximizing productivity in the early morning hours? How can someone establish a consistent wake-up time and avoid hitting the snooze button? Are there any specific morning routines or rituals that can help set someone up for a successful day after waking up at 4 a.m.? Can you discuss any additional scientific studies or research that support the benefits of waking up at 4 a.m.? Are there any particular mindset shifts that someone may need to make in order to fully embrace waking up at 4 a.m.? This is how we crush it. You know when something's going on and you call your friend and you say, hey, what do I do about this? Well, now we can use our new best friend for that. I'd like you to suggest a way to resolve a situation for me. I am working part-time as an IT assistant at a recruitment company. I work there three days a week while I'm studying at college. Each week, one member of staff gets to be on call in case somebody tries to break into the office block. The allocated person's mobile number is handed to security. If the alarm goes off during the night, security will call the number and the member of staff has to drive to the office and deal with the issue by either resetting the alarm if it gets set off by a bird or call the police if it seems like a break-in. The boss gave me the keys this morning and declared me as the allocated person. I don't want this response. I am not a full-time member of staff and, as somebody pointed out to me, I simply don't get paid enough to take on this responsibility. I need you to come up with a plausible argument to get out of this task. That was actually me. Only I didn't have ChatGPT on my side back then. Here is a plausible argument that you could use to get out of this task. You could express gratitude for being chosen, but also express your concerns regarding the responsibility. You could say something like, thank you for selecting me to be the on-call person. However, as a part-time employee and a college student, I am concerned that I may not have the necessary experience or availability to handle this responsibility effectively. You could emphasize the potential risks and liabilities involved in this responsibility. You could say, being the on-call person for security carries a lot of risks and liabilities. If something goes wrong, it could potentially have serious consequences for the company, and as a part-time employee, I do not have the resources to manage such risks. Finally, you could suggest an alternative solution to the problem. You could say, perhaps it would be better if we had a full-time employee or a more experienced staff member to handle this responsibility. This would ensure that we have someone who is fully equipped to handle any issues that may arise. Turn that into a short email. Don't make it too formal. Don't mention that I'm not getting paid enough. Perhaps allude to this fact, but not directly. Subject, on-call responsibility. Hi, thank you for considering me as the on-call person for security. I appreciate the trust you have in me. However, as a part-time employee and college student, I have concerns about being fully available and equipped to handle this responsibility effectively. I understand that being the on-call person carries a lot of risks and liabilities, and I want to make sure that we have someone who can manage these risks effectively. Perhaps we can consider assigning this responsibility to a full-time employee or a more experienced staff member who can handle it better. Thank you for your understanding. You can also use the AI to replicate situations and disputes, even arguments with your partner. You can use it like a testing battleground to thrash out ideas and see how they could play out before you do anything rash in the real world. I've got some friends staying over for a few days and the last time this happened I spent an entire evening searching Google for things to do. Not this time. Plan a five-day itinerary of things to do and places to visit in Liverpool and Manchester. Day one. Liverpool. Start your day with a visit to the iconic Albert Dock, which houses several museums, galleries, and restaurants. Take a stroll along the waterfront and marvel at the stunning architecture of the Liver Building. Liver Building, not Liver. It's not a hospital. And the Royal Liver Building. Liver! Head to the Beatles Story Museum, which offers an in-depth look into the lives of the Fab Four and their rise to fame. End your day by watching a performance at the Liverpool Empire Theatre, a historic venue that has hosted many famous performers over the years. Day 3. Manchester. Start your day with a visit to the iconic Manchester Cathedral, a stunning medieval structure that has stood for centuries. Easy. Continuing with the previous example, I need to entertain my friends. Ask me questions about the film The Matrix. Do nothing until I type something. If I type hint, give me a hint. I am allowed to ask for three hints for each question. If I answer incorrectly, tell me wrong and output the correct answer. If my answer is correct, answer correct. Then move on to the next question and repeat this process until you reach a maximum of 10 questions. Question 1. What is the name of the main character in The Matrix? Neo. Correct. Good start. Question 2. What is the name of the underground city where the humans live in The Matrix? Hint. 
Sure, the name of the city is a reference to the machine that makes coffee. You can use the AI to create quizzes about movies in a particular genre, as well as books, historic events, and even facts about the place where you live. Never be bored again. Sub, and I'll see you in the next video.